And uh, for more in depth uh, into COP27 activities, uh, Nile TV's correspondent Mona Musilhi conducted the following uh, interview with Ibrahim Sheikh Diong, United Nations Assistant Secretary General from uh, South Africa. And we're still with our coverage for Nile TV here at the uh, COP27 where it's taking place in uh, the Red Sea Resort of Sharm el Sheikh. And we have all the honor to have with us His Excellency Ibrahim Sheikh Young, the United Nations Assistant Secretary General, the Director General of the ARC Group. Thank you so much for being with us. This is mine. Thank you. And um, this is a big event Egypt is hosting. This is an event that Egypt is taking the helm, not only for Egypt, but also for Africa at large. How do you view the importance of this conference at this very particular time and at the uh, backdrop of all these circumstances that are occurring? Well, first of all, it's a very important gathering because I think it's important on an annual basis the rest of the world actually come together and take stock where we are in dealing with the climate situation. And I think that itself makes it extremely important mm. as taking stock of where we are today. I think second, it's also an important gathering because this is where we take stock of our commitment that we made as a world and to see if you're honoring them or not. And then see if there's any necessary correction going forward. But as far as Africa is concerned, you know that this is dubbed as the African Cup yes. because Egypt is hosting it. So it's very important the African concerns and the African voice is heard loud and clear here in Sharm el Sheikh. So we don't actually walk away from this gathering and feel that Africa is left out. Indeed, Africa is in the forefront of Egypt's uh, priorities. And indeed, this COP is not just made for Egypt, but for all Africa at large. When we speak about the um, the role that uh, Egypt has been uh, doing in trying to uh, bring together all stakeholders and partners for this conference. The most important is the four pivots of this conference, mitigation, adaptation, financial, and collaboration. And how do you view each and every uh, uh, pivot of those? Well, you probably know very well one of the biggest concerns for many Africans is to make sure when we come to Sham el Sheikh, our voice is heard loud and clear. And I believe since I've been here, that voice has been heard in many different platforms. To just underscore, we can do three things at the, at the same time. Resilience, adaptation, and mitigation. We have to multitask to make sure that these concerns are addressed uh, together. Now, as far as Africa is concerned, particularly resilience and adaptation, for the reason that you know, Africa contributes less to climate change, but yet we suffer from the impact. And that's why on the resilient front, the African concern is loss and damage, as you know, which the Africans are saying we should have a loss and damage fund, which will help us to protect the most vulnerable communities. I think the second concern of Africa is to make sure we have access to technology so we can model the risk and see our exposure to climate change and take the necessary actions. Third, Africans are saying commitment were made, $100 billion to support adaptation work. Let's make sure this commitment our owner so that we can get the funding required to support adaptation initiative. Last but not least, equally important, energy transitions. Africans are saying we can also benefit from our resources while protecting the environment. So my view is you can adapt, be resilient, and mitigate at the same time, and that's called multitasking. Actually, what, what we've been focusing on this COP is how to translate words into deeds because we as Africa are not contributing as uh, uh, much in the uh, climate change threats. Actually, we are vulnerable to, the, uh, to their threats. So how do you view or how is it possible to put uh, a kind of pressure on the world community to contribute in order to be able to uh, avert this global threat and uh, uh, particularly on Africa which is most vulnerable? Well look I'm actually a natural optimist and I'm actually going to walk away from Sharm el Sheikh. I think we made a bit of progress compared to the last time at COP26 when I was at uh, uh, in Glasgow. 
uh, some of the things really makes me extremely optimistic. If I look at, for example, the Arab donor group, and yesterday your Minister of International Cooperation chair an event where all the Arab donor institutions are pledging about $24 billion to come and finance adaptations. So we need the type of actions so we can move from actually talk to actions. I'm hoping that other countries uh, to the Global Shield, which is an initiative led by the G7, we can also get another statement of another commitment in terms of financial commitment. So we need all those different commitments to come together so we can get closer to the 100 billion that we promise. But in anticipation of the commitment, my plea to the African governments is to make ourselves ready whereby when the funding is available, they can go to adaptation projects that are designed in a way they can actually absorb these resources. So it's a two-way street. It's the funding, but the preparation of our countries to absorb the resources as well. Indeed, indeed. And when we speak about the preparation of uh, African countries in particular to attract uh, projects that are uh, um, for the, not only the sustainable development but also environmental ones, and, 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 and Africa has it all. I mean, we have everything. We have many resources. What kind of collaboration can we initiate? Because, of course, the COP is the United Nations uh, 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 sponsor and the United Nations uh, initiative. How can there be a kind of collaboration between both both organization, both world organizations, the United Nations and the African Union, and their state parties? Well, look, my organization is a good example of how the African Union and the United Nations actually work together. Uh, we are a specialized agency of the African Union. We are administered by the World Food Program, which is part of the UN. So we are absolutely an example how the UN and the AU can work together through our organizations. We also belong to 35 member states. We're supported by many partners. So therefore, we are an example that actually partnership is possible. The only way we can address the concern of climate change is through partnership. And that's why we believe uh, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Not one institution alone can do it we have to make sure we actually come together. What is funding commitment? What is actually preparation of our countries? What is actually policy reforms? What is community involvement? All these players are equally important, and that's why the way forward is strategic partnership, and that's the only way we can address the climate crisis. Finally here, if we propagate for Africa today, what would you tell the whole world? What would be the aspiration of the African nations all together at this uh, very important gathering. Well, I, I think the, the, the aspiration is while we have this big conversation about adaptation and mitigation, let's not forget about the human face of climate change. And there's all the vulnerable communities in Africa. We live off, let's say, agriculture, whereby any rate and deficit tends to affect the income of the most vulnerable communities. So therefore, it's important we ask ourselves a very simple questions. What are we going to be doing here in Shamal Sheikh? What difference is it going to make in the lives of many Africans who have higher expectations from us? That's one thing. I think second, how do you hold accountable the world leaders, the African leaders, so when we get back to our respective countries, whatever promise we made over here will be acted deliver either into policy, or politics, or funding, or regulatory framework that we need to put in place. Last but not least, there will be other cops. But the climate change, it's a very serious matter. This is not something that we can just talk about lightly. And I hope all of us will leave here inspired for more actions so we can actually protect uh, our world in a way that we can reduce the impact of climate change on many communities across Africa. I'm very optimistic and I leave here extremely inspired that we are part of the solution and not part of the problem. Yes, indeed. And add this optimism and add this very hopeful remark. I will leave our uh, interview here. And uh, Mr. Ibrahima Sheikh Diang, the United Nations Assistant Secretary General, Director General of the ARC Group, uh, we thank you so much for being with us and for your input. Pleasure was mine. Thank, thank you. you so much. And we get back to our studios and we'll be back with other coverage in this uh, COP27. So until then.